What is fairness? It's a tricky concept for actuaries. Always has been. Going back to the start of the profession. Fairness sounds straightforward. We all know what we think it means. Doing public service, helping people, is the very foundation of the actuarial profession and the origins of the insurance industry. But by definition, insurance is based on assessing risk factors and discriminating between them. What if these risk factors involve a protected characteristic such as race or gender? As every actuary knows, it is far from straightforward. So insurance is usually described by the financial mechanism where the many contribute to the misfortune of the few. So at its core, I think it's a mechanism of risk sharing. But when you look at it from an individual perspective, it's also about transferring risk from the policyholder to the insurance company. So we have a dual perspective, I think, and it makes it uh, very complex to analyze. And it's about also assessing individual probabilities, which is a very difficult concept to introduce and to calculate, actually. So with this context, is achieving fairness even possible? What is fairness anyway? Is it better to treat people equally based on pure statistics or differently, taking into account their circumstances? These dilemmas have been addressed for the profession since the 60s by the idea of actuarial fairness, devised by US economist Kenneth Arrow. His point was that policyholders should pay a premium that matched with their expected losses. That's it. Otherwise, if you charge more, then it's unfair for the policyholder. If you charge less, it's unfair for the, the, the company. But it, it's just an economic principle. Enter predictive models and machine learning in a big way. The leap in the use of automation in actuarial work has brought many benefits, but also raised further questions about fairness. Put simply, this is because these models use algorithms and generalized patterns potentially introducing inferred unintended biases or proxy discrimination. Black box functions where the decision making is hidden. Big data which may or may not be processed. I think other ethical aspects might be in terms of could using more advanced models have negative impacts on society. Um, that could be for example through these models introducing more discrimination in ways that we don't believe is legal or moral. Um, some of the work that I've done has shown that even in simple tr and traditional actuarial models, some of these concerns around that sort of proxy discrimination actually holds true even there. So I think there's a renewed focus and emphasis on ethics with respect to quantitative modeling that actuaries have always done. So usually we don't collect the race of the policyholders. We don't have access to this information to build the models. So race is not an input. But the predictive algorithms, they can infer the race through proxies, such as a postcode or a combination of many non-sensitive inputs. So if there is indeed a historical difference in the claim risk according to race, then the model will pick it up through the proxies, which will result in indirect discrimination. This complicates efforts to ensure fairness because simply removing sensitive variables does not eliminate their influence in OPAC AI systems. I think we are at a crossroads inevitably because there's been such a range and depth of breakthroughs that the actual profession can no longer ignore this. I think our traditional methodologies for modeling have uh, served the profession and society well, but with so many advances almost available at your fingertips, we have to make a change to stay relevant. So I'd say that's exactly the crossroads that we're at. Where do actuaries go from here to balance morals and modelling needs in a world that needs to embrace technological advances while maintaining ethical standards? The debate will be profession-wide, worldwide and ongoing. In the meantime, our experts advise they can do five things. One, be aware of the questions and pitfalls. Two, take extra care in model selection and data handling. Three, prioritize and help shape regulation around the issue. 
Four, be proactive in helping the profession embrace change. And lastly, five, value their vital role in navigating the way ahead. For actuaries who'd want to solve these problems, I'd say look outside, but also look inwards. Look at how actuaries have tried to solve these problems. Understand if the solutions that you find available are applicable to your particular problem. If they are, that's wonderful and use them. And if not, um, push the air, push the uh, boundary of knowledge and come up with something that's cutting edge to, to solve these problems in a new way. For more on this topic, see the March-April issue of The Actuary or visit theactuary.com.